Hi. Welcome to the Brookdale Computer Users Group. Anybody have any burning questions or what? I have a burning issue. Well, that's a good place to start. Yeah. I upgraded my Mint desktop to the latest LTS, and I found that the backup solution that I've been using since around 2012 has stopped working, and as well as a couple of other things. Oh. Uh, like Python has disappeared off my system. Really? Yeah. And so things oh. that were tied into Python stopped working. The, the issue is that there is no longer a default Python in the default mint slash Ubuntu, it's Python 2 or Python 3. And get more, get yeah. some fresh tests, you know. Yeah. And so that means that you need to install an extra package or set, set up something else for default Python to be Python 3. Huh. Hey, Sergey? Yeah? Was your Python installed on before the upgrade, did you oh, install yes. that through the repository or uh, did you install that on its own? I don't specifically remember, but I believe it was installed as part of the distribution. Okay. But I could be wrong. I mean, I've the system has been in various incarnations since forever ago, like as in probably circa 2010 or before. Um, so it's never been reinstalled clean since that time. You've upgraded a couple of times. Oh, it's been upgraded a whole bunch of times and converted and rehacked and, and so forth. It could have been something that I did. But with the package, I used a backup package called Deja Dupe, which relied on a background process called Duplicity to do backups to Amazon S3. And I'd set it up sometime around 2012 and it's been working flawlessly since then. And unfortunately at some point, uh, Deja Dupe stopped supporting non-consumer oriented storage backends, which included S3. So it continues to support things like Google Cloud and, the, and Azure, uh, like Amazon, like Azure, like Microsoft OneDrive, but not uh, sort of hacker-oriented <laughs> backends such as S3. And so because the new version with this phasing out of S3 as a backend came with a new version of Mint, I lost my backups with no warning whatsoever. Oof. Yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, the backups are still available. This is still Linux. I can go back and reinstall the older version of Deja Dupe and recover my backups. But long term, I need to look for a different backup solutions. Mm -hmm. This is really my first experience in Linux where existing functionality that worked well and was in use was just taken out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's open source. You do what you do. Yeah, I use so, so there's two Sergei. there's two issues, uh, Sergey. One of them is that S3 was removed as something that Duplicity supports. No, and Duplicity other, continues to support S3. It's Deja Dupe that stopped supporting. Oh, excuse me, Deja Dupe, Dupe stopped supporting S3. Right, and upgrading to the latest version of Mint LTS did not come with Python 3. No, it came with Python 3. What it didn't come with is a default Python. So it came with a Python 2 and a Python 3, but not Python that was pointing to one of those. Okay. So Python used to by default point to Python 2. Now I believe it should be pointing to Python 3 in most cases because Python 2 is, has been deprecated forever and ever. But uh, as far as I can, for some reason or another, I found myself without a user bin Python. So, uh -huh. uh, but there is an Ubuntu package called python-is-python3. And if you install that, it restores the link. 
or you could use alternatives or you could use some other mechanism. I mean, it was just a little unexpected that it wasn't there. How big are these backups that you make? Are they like a gazillion gigabytes or what, what kind of storage are you talking about? It's it's S3 and, it, and it's all transferred over the network. The, the big advantage with duplicity is that the encryption keys are held by me. So I never send unencrypted data on the internet. Nobody can decrypt them except for me or except for someone that has the key. Uh, but the the backups themselves are probably maybe a few tens of gigabytes, maybe a hundred gigabytes, you know, on that order. So I back up things that I cannot recover, which means my data, my documents, my pictures, those kinds of things. I don't back up the OS. I don't back up, uh, you know, installation files or anything like that. Anything that can be recovered, I don't don't see how it's worth backing up for the pe for the people who are in an area that has uh optimum altis i just upgraded my cable from regular cable to fiber altis now has fiber and whereas i used to have something like 90 gigabits download 30 gigabits per second upload me megabits excuse me megabits per second upload the package that i got was 300 megabits up and down and it reduced my charges i have triple play by 80 dollars a month at least for the first year so if you're uploading a large amount like that you'd like to have a a higher speed upload than you might be able to get. Of course, not everybody has those things available. John, have yeah. you verified that you're actually getting that speed for upload? Yeah. In fact, I tested it today um, because I usually use a VPN. I have a VPN on now and I mm -hmm. tested it with or without the VPN and with different uh, VPN exit points in New York and New Jersey. But uh, with the VPN turned off, I got 290, 290. Okay. So that sounds, sounds like they really are so supplying you with a symmetric subscription. The latest advertisements that I get from Optimum offer me 300 down, but only 20 up. Well, that's probably because it's not fiber. Yep. Now, the, the thing is that it depends on the computer. The... Uh, that computer that I tested it on was using Wi-Fi and it was using Wi-Fi 6. If I use another computer that has uh, an older Wi-Fi version, it doesn't go anywhere near as fast. So if you want your computer to go faster, you're either going to use a gigabit Ethernet and have a, an ISP that provides you with high speeds. So if you're going to keep your backups in the cloud, you want to pay attention to some of these things. Certainly want to be cognizant of your bandwidth up. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but my backups are relatively low requirement, and I'm not particularly bound by time since I, since they're weekly. I yeah, don't do them uh, daily. Let me, let me tell you how I do it as an old Luddite here, Bruce here. Uh, I have one of these. In fact, I have three of these small portable spinning hard drives that you plug in through USB. And I cycle through them, one, two, three, and I use a shell script with rsync, which I've created, which reminds me when I need to do a backup. And it, that, so I don't have to worry about encryption at all. I take this and I put it in a safe place and I'm pretty much encrypted unless somebody breaks into my apartment. So anyway, it's just another approach. Just keep the stuff local and it's not that expensive. Well, I I kind of like the idea of having the backups offsite. Yeah, yeah. I, I worry about local backups. I okay. What well, goes on throughout the country and the world? I just worry about local backups. Okay, my I, local backups. I have three three of these disks, and one of them lives in a safe box. How safe is your safe box in an earthquake? My safe box is in a is in a uh, is in a bank, uh, away from here, uh, in a vault. 
And I think it's probably as safe as it could be. Safer than I am, let's put it that way. So if the earthquake takes me out, I don't really give a crap about my back. <laughs> <laughs> The big, ad, the big advantage that I've had for the last 10 years or so is my backups have been totally hands off. I didn't even notice when they were run until they were broken. Yeah, well, and I started that's getting pop ups that, you know, that that's started good. reminding me. I've in, in all of that time, I think I've restored a single file once because <laughs> I accidentally blew it away. Um, you know, but, and it was absolutely trivial to restore it. Because Deja Dupin had excellent integration with the desktop. You literally click on the directory and it offers you an opportunity to restore files. But unfortunately, no no bulk backends, only only consumer oriented ones. Google Drive is good. OneDrive is good, but local storage is fine. So but no S3. Yep. Sergi, when you have a remote backup and you need to uh, restore a single file under normal mm -hmm. circumstances is that possible with your your setup or do you have it's all or nothing or can you restore no a no no, no. File? absolutely deja dupe literally has integration with the desktop browser and i believe there's actually a package of under windows with similar functionality called duplicity no not duplicity uh duplicati is the name Oh, I've seen spell that. Yeah. Dupli yeah. C A T I? Dupli. Yeah, I, I, I think yeah. I've heard of it. Yeah. 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 And um, can you explain the encryption? You say you keep the keys locally. Can you explain right. what you mean by that? That literally means that encryption is done on my machine before any data is leaves my machine. And the key itself is encrypted by a password that only I know. So when they when they advertise backups uh, being encrypted, that that is not sufficient for what you're doing. You you must have the uh, keys locally. Uh, Absolutely. If, if if a service advertises encryption, that's useless. Well, there is there is at least two different levels in terms of encryption, right? There is encryption in transit. That is, is your data being transmitted over an encrypted line? And then there is encryption at rest. That is, at what point is does does the data does the stored data become decrypted? In my case, and in case of Deja Dupin and, and backed by Duplicity, uh, the, the only time when the data exists in unencrypted form is on my machine. Right, so, even if my ISP wanted to, even if they had a warrant, if they were taken over by an enemy, they could not disclose <laughs> my data because they don't have the key. Right, and and I certainly trust this enough to where this backs up all of my personal data, financial data, and everything else I own. So, are you about to open a new account with Google? With Google, and to or... to, to switch to your backup backend? No, I have no desire to switch my backend which means that I'll probably migrate to using Duplicity directly. So my task is to figure out how does Deja Dupe use Duplicity and set up scheduling for Duplicity so that it does its thing just like it's been doing for the last 10 years or so. But I, I find my charges for all the backup storage uh, where it keeps something to the tune of two months worth of weekly backups are about three dollars a month, you know, and I know exactly what I'm paying for. I'm paying for the storage itself, nothing else. Well, I mean, there's negligible charges for data transfer in addition to the actual storage costs, but they really are tiny. Yep, I, I use a service called Backblaze to do yep. my backups. There's, there are several services out there. Uh, the, the question in my mind is, what is it that you're depending on from those services and, and how much information are you disclosing? How much control do they have? How portable is it? You know. I'm across Black, uh, Backblaze. Can you elaborate a little bit more? What are the advantages and disadvantages of, of Backblaze? It, it was uh, one of several that I looked into. Mm -hmm. uh, is it uh, is there unlimited storage or is it limited? Uh, 
Yes, they tr they charge uh, one fee per month of seven dollars for as much storage as you can hang off of that one computer. So, one computer. Um, you pay per PC, and if you want to hang ten USB hard drives with ten gigabytes, ten terabytes each, you you're the, you're that's all fair game as long as it's attached to that one computer. Because some external backups will not. Uh, do the uh, external hard drives or USBs, but black yeah. backblaze will do that. Is what you're saying? Yes, they do. Okay. They back up your whole computer, um, soup to nuts, C colon backslash everything. So you get a complete replica of your hard drive up on their backup server, and it requires two-factor authentication login for me to get to that data to do a restore. Now, if I have multiple partitions on my hard drive, will it do that, or is that considered more than one computer? No, it looks at uh, it looks at your whole PC um, and backs up everything. Okay. So a friend of mine just sent me a review of a bunch of backup service providers, and I just shared that in chat. I haven't had a chance to study it in detail. I just noticed that they're all commercial backup services. So you're paying for the service in addition to the storage or. But you know, I use back in time, which basically is a graphical front end for our sync. And, but I, I like, like Bruce, I back up locally and I have a few files that I carry with me all the time encrypted, you know, on a, uh, a memory stick. But I figure if, if unless my house burns to the ground, my, my, my backup is safe. If my house burns to the ground, <laughs> I probably don't really care about that data anyway, except for, <laughs> for what I have with me, which are my my uh, passwords and a year's financial records, my last tax return. Yeah, I looked at back back in time at one point in time, and I my recollection is that at the time I rejected it because it gave me very little choices as to what gets backed up. Oh, okay. I I back up but, just my uh, my home directory and one directory in the system area yeah um i i just recall it demanding a few hundred gigabytes of storage on my local machine and it didn't provide offsite hmm. storage so those I were the kind of things that made me back off i haven't looked into that you know there is there is a program called lucky backup which you may have heard of that i think is another front end for rsync if i'm not mistaken i don't, I don't know for sure hmm. <clears throat> lucky is there a, is there a GUI for R sync or is it command line? Well, oh. lucky, lucky backup is a is a GUI front end for R sync is what it amounts to. Oh, okay, fairly as, straight as is back in time. Yeah, R sync is like one of these one of these bulletproof programs that's that's been around Unix and Linux forever and uh, and is really dependent on by a lot of people. So I think that's yeah. Bruce. You, I think you introduced to introduced it to me many many moons ago uh, okay I'd i use i use our sync as a backup for a different backup solution that i have for doing off-site i'd be perfectly happy to share my script that i use to run that thing which could be at least amusing to people if not something that they wanted to hack hack up to their own satisfaction and use but we don't really have a way to share files very much in bcug it's it's, it's uh, uh, i thought groups.io provides some of that Okay, I'll have to dig into I.O. a little more. I, I've only yeah, if you, if you the on that. If, if you I go on the website, I think there's a file dump. If there's a file dump place, I, I'll, I'll throw a few things up there just for the hell of it. So you guys can... Well, there's a, file, there's a files area, and you can also... I uh, think you can make it... You can do an attachment when you do your posting to uh, groups.io. Yeah, uh, attachments are awkward. I'd rather have something that stays still where people go look at it when they want. Yep. We'll see. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll check that out. I hadn't I haven't looked into I/O in great detail. I I have found with with back in time, and I think it's probably because of our sync that while backups are fast, restores can be very slow, especially if it's a big file. That's well, interesting. We're, we're, I if you're yeah, going we, to the cloud, remember, you're, 
no, forget what I forget that. Oh, I'm, I'm, I do local backups, John, but uh, okay. but even restoring a local backup is is quite slow. If like I, typically a, a, a uh, virtual machine is, I, I I back those up, and it's uh, you know it's time for a cup of coffee. Yeah, but sure our you... sync is fully symmetric. Yeah. So, so the the problem can't be in our sync. Our sync doesn't know backup from restore, right? It's just it, moving files. Yeah, it just could makes... be a problem with with the disk because our sync is only uh, uh, backing up the blocks that are have changed. And it makes so sure I'm it sure... backup. It may be searching all over my my disk to to assemble the, the blocks for a file. I don't know if it's a third game. Yeah. Make sure you use compression when you're going over the internet in particular. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. This is a a, a local file. I mean, a local. Okay. That's what I'm backing up to. Well, try compression to see if you go faster. Well, if I wanted to bring back one file from my backups, I would just mount the backup file system and dig into it because it, it is mountable and you can look through it and just find what you want. Yes. So, actually, our thing's not involved in backing up a single file. Just go look for it in, in the backups. There, there are a file system you can get in there and read. Yeah, but I, I think I still need to use the front end. I haven't, I haven't tried that, Bruce. You know, I just, uh, I'm using this stupidly, uh, which <laughs> yeah. is, which is my habit. Which has its advantages and disadvantages. That's exactly how I was using Deja Dupe. Now <laughs> I don't know what its, what its innards look like, and therefore it's a, it would be a challenge to restore something without backing the software to the previous version, which I haven't yet done. Anyway, we're taking a lot of time from away from Bill Chris and his presentation tonight. Nah. <laughs> Bruce, you know how this goes, right? We start talking and words come out. Well, we got useful stuff done, I think. I've, I've got something to do. Yeah, I'd like okay. to leave with an assignment, a homework assignment, if you Here will. You go. You gotta love it. So.